Hey you guys, welcome back to my garden. I am so excited to take you on today's garden tour. It is July and we've had a, I know some people think that this has been a really cold year, but this, my husband and I were just talking and this year has been the most like summer and actually the entire year that we remember growing up here in North Idaho. So I'm actually pretty happy about that. It gives me a really good testing point for all of the different things we're trying to grow and what really will work here. Um, I have been working for so many years, probably seven years on this property right here to see what will do well, what things don't do well, what are just a waste of time and what things can we like push the boundaries with. So this year I have planted succession crops basically since oh late April normally I get things in a little bit earlier than that but um it was it was a cold and long spring so we do get some hot springs we get some cold springs we get wet junes we get dry junes really it just depends and so you honestly just have to watch it and and kind of try to guess what is the cycle going to be like in um any given year and then and then go with that so um, right now I am sitting in my cellar garden. We call this the cellar garden right here. It's right in the middle of our yard and it's one of our main crop gardens. We plant in ground and I use a different, a couple of different ways to try to warm up the ground here. And the reason we call this the cellar garden is number one, we were going to build a root cellar in this spot and then grow um, root crops that we could store but we never ended up actually building that root cellar because we liked having this much garden space so we still do grow main crops in here and main harvest like kind of crops that we like to process not really for fresh eating um, though we can a little bit here and there but this is really like a production oriented garden so I am really, really excited. We've had so much rain, like it rained like crazy last night and we had a big old thunderstorm and then the days have been really good. And this is the best I ever for tomatoes on this property. They are doing so good. That's why I'm sitting here showing you this whole row here. I have flowers and I am hoping that we get some fruit set here soon. Um, my peas on the other side, well, you see a sunflower there, but I have peas that grow underneath. Let's see if I can show you those. There they are. Uh, they're a little sad this year. Something ate most of the seeds and because it's rained so much, the peas didn't really love that. So we are, we're, it just is what it is. It's one of those things. We bought extra seeds so we'll be able to save for next year. And then um, I did go ahead and plant cucumber seeds in the ground last week just to see, let's see if we can get cucumbers to grow this late in the season and see if we can get any harvest off of them. I've actually had really bad luck with cucumbers this year and that's kind of unusual. We usually do pretty good with cucumbers here. We have the pea, peas on that trellis there. We have the tomatoes down this trellis and I will be pruning them soon. We have a whole three different kinds of beans growing down this one and we use the black agriculture fabric um, it's like a woven cloth and that helps heat the soil up and I, that's why I specifically have beans and tomatoes planted where they are so that they have the warmer soil. I have onions down this next row and then cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli all down this row. We've already, already started harvesting out of it and um, you can see that white butterfly there. That's a cabbage moth. So we're going to be checking for cabbage like the little cat caterpillars um, here probably tonight. Um, we just hand pick them off. I was a little bit nervous about our squash patch here. Squash is not something that grows very well. Squash and tomatoes, peppers, and corn really just don't do well on our location. And so I kind of took a chance. I really researched varieties and tried to come up with some. I am growing some different varieties from Heirlooms Evermore. I will let you know how that trial goes at the end of the season. Um, we do have them all labeled and then, oh, oh my goodness, I was so excited. I wanna show you this. This is my first one of this kind of nasturtium growing. 
So just a second here and I'll show you. But anyway, I've had, it's been such a long, cold season, if you will, and which I am fine with. I do not like the heat. It's pretty humid and hot right now. <laughs> um, I will definitely take the, um, I will definitely take the cold season over anything else. Our family isn't really big into squash eating. We eat a lot more roots than we do squash, but that's because roots grow really well here. If we live somewhere where um, tomatoes and corn and squash grew better, we would eat those things. So anyway, here's a look at our squash patch. We have several varieties growing. Some of them um, didn't make it at all. Some of them are looking really good and have perked up. We have had some pretty good hot days in between the cold days and they they really like that and they were looking really yellow for a while and now they've greened up and they're happy so um but i want to show you i want to show you our first nasturtium flowers so this is the very first i've ever had bloom on our property i've planted them several years and something happens every single year to them this is the orchid cream from baker creek and it's so pretty i just love it so this plant's gonna do really well. Um, these poor little squash next to it, Black Beauty, these are zucchini, um, are a little bit not happy, but it is what it is. Like I said, this is not, we try, this is not really the climate for these guys. And then we have had, we did plant them into this black fabric. We've had a lot of wind and that kind of um, yanks the plants around a little bit, but this, heats the soil up and I, I'm really liking that. I think it's going to work. This might be a year where we actually get squash. Yay, here's another one. This is the same variety. Oh, I love nasturtiums. We use the flowers in salads, but I also use them as a uh, companion plant for my squash. Oh, and there's another one. Oh my goodness, they must have really liked the rain. Cool. This is a spaghetti squash next to it. And then I thought I saw another one. We also really like, yep. The um, tall trailing mix, cause it will grow like 12 feet. But I'm pretty excited about that. So in these high tunnels, or low tunnels, whatever you'd like to call them, these are the pepper houses. Now, this year we had to move the peppers out and let the greenhouse, which you can see back there, well, you can see over there, we had to let the greenhouse rest. Normally that's basically, I call it the pepper house. And I needed to put the peppers somewhere else. Well, because it's been so chilly, the cats have really liked it. So they've kind of dug in here and messed with the peppers a fair amount, but they are perking up. They like the heat. I see some flowers. So we'll see, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. And since I have this plastic on here, this is six mil greenhouse plastic, um, it should help protect them if we have any frost. And we put the, we seriously are still lowering those all night long. Oh, yay. Oh, I gotta show you this too. This is like the month where everything starts to pop. So I've got our first broccoli. This one is um, not really liking all the temperature shifts we've had, but this one looks a little bit better. And this one, yeah. So we're probably gonna mostly get some side shoots on these, but I, that's fine. I'm happy with this still. I'm excited. And we already harvested that cabbage. It was huge. The house here, we have rhubarb and catnip fever few and a whole bunch of different lilies growing up against that and I'm so excited because they're just starting to open and they're so pretty. I am most excited for this red color. They're just so beautiful. There's a they're doing a lot better than they did last year. Last year they were like this tall, bloomed, this horrible bloom and then died in a couple of days because it was so hot last year. Last year was a very unusual year for us. Um, okay, we're gonna go over to the kitchen garden now. I'll show you how that's doing. We have been eating salad for so many meals. So we are, if you have any um, 
fantastic salad recipes, please leave them in the comments for us because we're starting to get, well, honestly, I'm not, I'm not really getting tired of salad. My children might be though. The strawberry beds that we put in are just doing amazing. We've had some strawberries off of them. And then these ones, we picked all the flowers off. So we're not going to get strawberries this year, but we will. Well, we may end up getting fall strawberries off of this bed, um, but mostly next year. And I do, this is my tomato from the tomato lady. And it has tomatoes on it. This is a sun, no, a sugar gold. No, sun, sun sugar. Sun sugar tomato. And it has quite a few fruits on it. So I'm really excited. A tip for tomatoes, if you are not getting any fruit off of them, I heard, and it's pretty funny, but it works. <laughs> it's called spanking your tomatoes. So all you do when you walk by is give them a little shake. And basically that just helps pollinate. So I try to, uh, do that for all of mine and just handle them often. So this row, some of the rows here are starting to uh, go to flower, you see. Uh, I'll leave it for the bees, probably just for another couple days and then I'm gonna pull all of this and replant. The peas are just going crazy. We have so many peas, I'm really excited about that. So this is, um, I think this is the Lincoln pea. I have two different short varieties, so we can eat it right now, which we have been doing in salads and all kinds of ways and just fresh eating. And then, um, so yeah, you can just pick it and just eat it. They're so sweet. Or you can wait until it forms the actual peas and then you can harvest it and freeze the peas or can the peas or eat them or whatever you're going to do. The Kiss Me Over the Garden Gates are doing really well. The um, radishes, these ones were from Heirlooms Evermore. They're the French breakfast. Unfortunately, I planted so many that even though we ate them with like every salad, we didn't get through them. So they're going to seed. I'm going to, I might let them go to seed and then save the seeds. Um... I feel kind of a draw to do that more and more. I had kind of stopped doing that for a while for most stuff, especially my flowers. And I think I'm actually gonna pick it back up. I just think it's wise to have extra and then you can share or trade. So I haven't really weeded this garden in a couple days so, or, well, actually I haven't really weeded it in like a week or more. So it is slowing down, the weeds are slowing down and the regular vegetable plants are definitely taking over. I have a couple of different kinds of peas over here. That's the Oregon sugar pod pea right there. It's our absolute favorite snow pea. And um, I have no more seed and I wasn't able to buy more seed this year. So I will most likely save all the seed from these. And um, that way I can uh, have more seed for next year. This little bed right here that the voles destroyed has taken over with sunflowers. So I'm not too worried about it. I did lose those black king pansies, unfortunately, but I have more seed for those. So I may start a flat of them and try to get a fall crop. This bed right here is just going nuts. We have the biggest beet leaves I've ever had. They're so big. It's the year of the beet and my family might not be super excited about that because they don't really love beets, but um, I like beets. So uh, we'll see if we can come up with a way that they'll eat them. Um, this is that dragon stir fry mix. I think I planted too much of it. So I'm just letting it just flower. And again, for the bees, and then I'll, um, I'll pull it here and plant something different. We have more peas, same kind as the others. Lots of lettuce, which we harvest every day. The beet greens, which I probably should thin, but I've been just pulling them up and thinning them as I go for salads. And tons of beans. These are doing great. These are the um, contender beans, and they're doing really pretty fantastic. I didn't have hopes for them in the beginning, and um, and honestly, they're they're really performing well. So I'm expecting flowers very soon. And then we have a whole row of Swiss chard 
and this really fun dinosaur kale. I've been wanting to grow this. I don't know why, it just looked fun. Um, and it is really tasty. So we've been eating that in our salads as well. So that kind of sums up the garden here. The tree is getting big, I'm gonna have to trim it again. <laughs> I try to keep the branches up high so that the sun can still come through. The robins for the very first year found Honeyberry Hill, which is behind me, and harvested most of the honeyberries, which Maggie was not happy about. <laughs> she tried to go pick some the other day and they were gone. So yeah, I don't even see any on there anymore, but that's okay. Other years, so we'll have to get some netting for next year. Hmm, I just found a strawberry and my children are not home. Mommy gets this one. Mmm, so good. I actually found another one. This is the fun part of having a food forest is that you get to just find food growing all over. So the Jossa berry behind me is still ripening up. There are fruits on it and it's doing pretty good. We have lots of California poppy in the back, which I'll be harvesting here. Uh, probably I'm going to start harvesting. Actually, I need to do a really big herb harvest because we have all our mints are ready. Our yarrow's ready. The, um, poppies are ready. For some reason, my calendula patch didn't do very good this year. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, and my rose bush, most of the petals got knocked off from the rain we've had. So I might try and go get some. I'm going to take you in here into the main garden. And I am so, so, so excited to show you guys what we've been working on because we've been working our tails off. Last night we weeded until dark. I've told you this story before and if you're new here, I'll tell you again. Um, this garden has had a problem with voles. This garden has had a problem with um, creeping grass because of the voles and because of some things that we didn't know in the beginning of building our Back to Eden garden. So if you are gardening where there's types of creeping grass and you want to use the Back to Eden garden method, number one, do not think that Back to Eden is without work. That's not true. Second thing is if you are doing it where there are voles and where there is creeping grass, put down some kind of barrier. Concrete, bl bricks, railroad ties. We use telephone poles that, we've, that are old or just logs or anything like that because otherwise you will end up with this giant nightmare like I have. Now it looks worse than it is. It's not that bad because there's so many wood chips in here that pulling this grass out is fairly easy but we have such a large garden that was already established when this big problem happened that trying to take it back has been kind of a beast. So I'm actually gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you the garden through my eyes for a little bit.
I've taken you through this herb patch before and now it's already changing so much. The mint is getting taller. The poppies are open. The rose campion is open. The valerian is flowering like crazy everywhere. The hyssop is just about to open and you can see it here. It's so tall. Oh, here's some. I just love this one. The bees love the hyssop. One of my favorite things to do is find all the different kinds of plants that you can grow. Like this is florist yarrow and it's so beautiful. It's such pretty shades of pink. This is the Colorado mix from Baker Creek and it has yellows and pinks and I think there's like a burgundy color. Um, there's a light pink and a dark pink, but it's all the same. It's still medicinal. And so why not have all the colors rather than just the regular wild white? The thyme that I thought was gonna die is still alive. It's come back pretty good. So I didn't harvest anything off of that this year. This raspberry patch behind me is just going crazy. It's completely loaded. As usual, Titus would like to say his piece. This Veronica is growing and doing so good right here. But the main thing that I am so excited about is that we have really managed to take back this middle section of the garden. We only have a little bit more work to do. And um, this bed right here has been planted. I see some things starting to pop up. It's getting hot, so I'm gonna have to actually water move away from the chickens. Probably gonna have to water even though it rained hard last night. But my mom has been working so hard and got this bed all cleared out. So I'm gonna broad fork it. I'm gonna use my birthday present for the first time and test out the broad fork and take this back over here. This bed, which I prepared before my trip to Tennessee is planted and starting to pop up. This bed, which was wildly overgrown, I got completely weeded and it looks so amazing. There are vegetables growing in it and I'm so excited. This is an annual reseeding flower bed, which is, I'm so excited. This, this is one of my favorite flowers. You can't cut it. Well, you can, it only lasts a day or two in a vase, but it's called an Icelandic poppy. And the seeds were given to me a friend, from a friend and uh, I just love them. The shade of pink is so bright and they just look amazing at nighttime. I've got quite a few of them blooming. There's all kinds of flowers. The poppies are totally everywhere. Oh my goodness. I am so, so excited right now. I've been trying to get these to grow I can't even tell you how many years. This is the first time. So I saved the orange California poppies from one of our rental houses. We moved like a whole bunch of times in our earlier 20s and things like that um, until we moved and settled in this house. And then I found a pink poppy that's still a California poppy and I've tried and tried and tried to get it established and it never would take. So this is the very first. Oh, and there's more, there's so many. I can see at least four right now Oh, I'm so excited. You see, those are so pretty. And all I could think of is like, it's like the color of a sunset. So, oh, it just makes me so happy. So you guys are the witnesses. You get to see my first colorful pink poppies. I have a whole bunch of cilantro that self sows in this garden and I let it. I love volunteers. If they, volunteers are really hardy. And so if you allow them to come up in your garden, it's just something you don't have to sow anymore and that's one of the reasons why i quit saving seeds but then sometimes things die out and if you want to bring them back then you've got to have your own seed on hand and sometimes you can't buy this seed that you're hoping you can buy so save your seeds it's not as hard as you think um seed to seed i can't remember who it's written by susan something i'll put um the link down in the description is a great place to start it's a little bit of a complicated book but seed saving in itself is not complicated this is an elderberry, which is about ready to flower. And last night, my amazing husband helped me weed this whole section and pull out this grass that was seriously, well, 
this stuff is shorter but the stuff we pulled out last night was like six feet tall it was so massive so you can actually see my apple tree again <laughs> and the comfrey plants and we got some more light coming in i did save some wild lettuce and i saved a whole bunch of catnip and i saved this awesome um red clover in here which is great but one of the main reasons we really wanted to get this exposed is because all the currants the black currants and the red currants and the white currants are all starting to ripen and my daughter loves them and we can't see them through the grass so now this is all exposed and i'm really excited these are just absolutely loaded this year so this is a white currant and they're starting they're not quite there yet but they're getting close we also have these red currants and they're starting but it's a lot easier to see things and then i also have these strawberry rings here i'll show you so i ringed each current plant well a couple of them anyway with these strawberries and i noticed yesterday that they were really starting to get ripe and the kids just can't see them and they don't know where to where to walk if it's too crazy. So we tried to pull as much grass as we can and now we can come out here and eat strawberries whenever we like. This guy is just loaded. So I do have potatoes growing in here. I see that they're flowering. The comfrey is still gigantic because I have not gotten to cut it down yet. There's so many things to do on a farm. The list is never ending and you just have to do what you can. So we have been keeping this weeded. Unfortunately, the straw bedding that I thought I was going to be able to use to mulch it this year, which is how I like to grow my onions, um, is way too matted down because we've had so much rain and I knew it would just crush these onions. So we've just been keeping them watered and weeded, which is unfortunately a little bit more work for us. And, um, and it just kind of is what it is, but we'll be harvesting them in no time, so I'm not too worried about it. So this is the potato patch. It's doing so good. All the plants are starting to flower. The raspberries, these are the um, fall gold raspberries that we planted together quite a while ago, are actually going to bear. Um, now, since this is the first year, for them, I'm not sure what they're gonna do, so we're just gonna have to watch them and hope that they will continue to bear fruit for us over the years. Here's another first in my garden, which I'm so excited to show you, is this is an aronia berry, otherwise known as choke berry. Not, don't get it confused with an actual choke cherry. There are two different things. People call them both interchangeable, but they're not the same plant. Um, so this was a labeled plant and it does look very different than our choke cherries do. Um, so this is the very first year that it is bearing fruit. Oh, and I have so much red clover this year. I'm so excited about that. I've just kind of let it go. Red clover is great for medicine. It's a good blood cleanser. I like to harvest as many different kinds of herbs and things as I can. So I'll show you the last bed here. And then I'll tell you what my plan is moving forward here. So this is the kids' garden area. Two of my children have basically given up on their gardens. <laughs> and one of my children has done very good. He's kept his as weeded as possible here for a little guy. And uh, his potatoes are doing well. It's not terrible, but, um, you know, it's just good lessons for the kiddos. I have some more... Um, Things going on over here. The currants over here are bearing. This cherry over here is just kind of hanging out. So behind me is the next section we're gonna start working on. Basically, I've told you before, we had a couple of great big pine trees in here and that was the beginning of this demise of this area uh, because it changed what was once a very slow growing shade garden into a wild jungle. And so like right now I can't even get through the path. But I did get this apple tree planted in here and that was this year. It did fruit or flower, but it hasn't fruited because I don't have anything for it to cross pollinate with. 
and then um, the rhubarb loves it over here too. So we do have a few things hidden in here that we're going to try to expose. Last year I wood chipped this area really heavy and as you can see um, wood chip gardening does not necessarily mean no weeds. So um, they will however come out very easily. Now if you are a avid back to Eden gardener and you have had a different experience than me I'd love for you to leave it down in the comments. But it's good to take note that in our garden here we have pushed all of these methods to the limits no-till back to Eden um, permaculture we we've really tested just about every method that's come across my uh, table here and I wanted to push them and see how far could they go how little work could you do how little watering how little weeding you know all the things and so some some of this stuff it's really bit me in the butt and I've had to like work hard to take it back again but then other things it has um proved to be a good experiment and I feel like this year for the first time we're really learning we've learned our land we know our land now I know my garden beds the soil is being built up so well and things really are thriving this year so I'm I'm pretty excited about that we will be pulling out yeah this is how tall some of this grass is it's like over my head <laughs> it doesn't look over my head from the camera angle but it is it's taller than me and if you stand some of it up it's really tall um so my husband's gonna help me rip that out the roots on the runner grass I think this is a type of fescue um feel free to correct me if I'm wrong but um it's, it's just got some brutal, crazy runner roots, and it's a pain in the neck. So we'll be getting that out of here, hopefully tonight. And then also, this is the blueberry patch, and there's also strawberries in there, and we'd like to add gooseberries, which I do already have in the greenhouse. Um, and we will be getting this back. It has also been wood chipped pretty heavily, and this creeping grass just doesn't care. It actually really likes the wood chips, so that's why it looks so awful. And... Um, we'll be taking that back. My goal is to be able to show you some major improvements in every single garden tour video. I need to walk around because it was a little chilly today. I was actually wearing pants and a sweatshirt this morning, um, but now it's getting really hot. So I'm hoping I haven't fried my greenhouse. It's probably a little wilty in there and I'm gonna have to water it, but I'll give you a look at it anyway. Let's go check it out. It's still alive and definitely wilted. Oh yes, it is so hot in here. Oh my goodness. It's a hundred degrees in here. Not the best thing. Get some airflow going. I will need to water my plants, especially the ones in the pots. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this garden tour today. Thank you for joining me. If there's something that you have questions about, if you garden in a cold climate like I do, I'd love to know the plants that were successful for you to grow. We've tested out all the plants that I can find. <laughs> um, I really, as you can see, I have a great love of plants and all things green and colorful. And I think the more plants, the merrier. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend and I'll see you guys again next week.